Hey everybody and welcome back to the Fat Man Little Trail podcast. It's been a a while since I've done my last podcast. I gotta be honest with you, there is a chance that I forgot that I do a podcast. Between the website and the YouTube channel and all the social medias, I may have forgot. But now I'm back and uh, we're going to kind of reboot the podcast and start over a little bit. And I'm going to try to stay a little bit more... um, on point, a little bit more uh, formatted, uh, but I'll still ramble on incessantly because I know that's what you guys really like. Uh, we're also going to try to do a little bit of video that will show up on my YouTube channel. But for those of you listening on Google and Spotify and Apple, welcome back. Uh, thanks for the hundreds of you that were listening to the podcast uh, when I forgot that I, I did it. And uh, hopefully we'll pick up right where we left off. Um, starting this new format, what I want to do is talk about Uh, A few things, and I always want to start with the hike of the week. Um, This week, for me, the hike of the week uh, is called Ruby Gulch, and it's out in Colorado in Clear Creek County. Um, It's one of those hikes that is really hard to find. It's not very well-traveled. Just finding a parking place, you go down this dirt road um, outside of Empire, Colorado, and you're going down this dirt road, and there's just a little tiny pull-off, and There's no markings for the trails or anything like that, but you walk down the dirt road a little bit and you end up finding uh, another road that's actually blocked off um, with a big fence, but you walk up that service road. And I've got to be honest with you, that service road was steep. I mean, that's a hefty hike or steep uh, hike right there. So you're going straight up this. I think it was, I don't know, it was like 16 grade, but it was like straight up 16 grade. Uh, There wasn't any any switchbacking or anything like that. So I ended up doing this hike on the 4th of July with my friend Alex, and uh, she's gone on a lot of hikes with me, and she's a very patient person, which which helps because on those steeper hikes and things like that, what I often have to do is I pretend like I'm stopping to take a picture, but in truth, I'm trying to catch my breath. Uh, and hiking with Alex, I couldn't exactly fake it with the pictures. So she was very patient, and she she was a sport about the whole thing. Um, So for about the first mile, you're walking up the service road, there's trees on either side, you can hear a stream, you can hear a a waterfall at one point, but you can't really see any of that. And then the trail kind of veers off and and the road stops and and the trail kind of gets grass covered a little bit and a little bit harder to find uh, or to follow, but it becomes one of those really uh, nice trails that, that isn't as worn as a lot of the trails that are just dirt and they've been walked on a thousand times. So it felt good to be on a trail that was a little off the beaten path. Uh, As you proceed down the trail, you start with these stream crossings though. And the stream crossings are, there's about 13 of them, 12 to 13, I think think we counted. And this is like still prime glacier melt, snow melt area. And there was still snow that was up on some of the higher peaks. There wasn't a lot because we went on the 4th of July. But there was still a little bit of snow up there. And these streams are moving fast and that water is cold. And the first one, you know, me and Alex like kind of made our way across. I think we walked across some logs or some rocks or something like that. And it was like, okay, you know, this will be easy. We'll be able to handle it. And uh, the we was wrong because she was able to handle it from then on. Uh, But I think of the next five um, streams that we had to cross, I think three of them I ended up trying to step, slipping, falling shin deep into into the water, um, which is always fun. That's nice and cold, and it makes for a nice wet uh, hike to the re- or uh, walk for the rest of your hike. Um, but the streams were beautiful, and, and the whole area was beautiful. And just seeing uh, Colorado when it's got, you know, the water and the moisture coming through in the spring and in the early summer uh, is really is really a nice thing. Uh but you can't really see anything for the first half of the hike. And then all of a sudden we get into our first clearing. We come out to this clearing and we can finally see what we're actually walking towards. And what it was, was this completely bold in, uh, surrounded by, by peaks. And all the peaks are like 13,000 foot, 12 and 13,000 foot peaks. So as you get into this clearing, all of a sudden you've got grasses and you've got small shrubs and, and, some juniper trees and things like that. But as you look further out, you see these just giant peaks and it just completely surrounds you. And it was one of the more um, beautiful uh, things that I've I've seen on the trail. But like the first clearing is only like 200 yards. And then you've got to cross another stream, which 
I again fell into. Uh, and then you move on to uh, you're back into the woods and you're going back surrounded. You can't really see anything. You're just surrounded in woods, walking down a path and you come to a couple more stream crossings, which I, of course, fell in. And then finally, you clear the trees for the last time and you're walking up this gulch and the trail pretty much completely disappears and, and you just kind of work your way. You, you, we had a map from all trails, so we kind of knew the general direction where we're going and we went uh, as far as we could. And then we found this like really gently running stream down a rock face, basically coming down like a 30 degree rock face, just kind of flowing down. And it looked like there might be a lake up at the top, so we wanted to check that out. And we just started hiking up the, the, the rocks um, with, the, with the flowing water. And this was only, you know, an inch, two inches deep. We made it up there, and I've got to tell you, we both, and we're, we've both done a lot of these hikes in Colorado, and we both just kind of looked at each other, and it was just one of those wow moments. And this, this kind of caught our breath, or, you know, at least for me. It took me by surprise at just how beautiful it was. Everything was green. The like you come up to a meadow and it's kind of like a, a, a meadow in the middle of this bowl and then as you look further you just see these just giant rocky peaks some with snow still on them and some um you know depending on what side they were facing some of them had some greenery some of them were just dark rock and but you're just completely surrounded and then the meadow in front of you and it was one of my my favorite moments hiking um one of the nice things too and if you're not from colorado I don't know if you'd understand it's so busy out here now that we found a trail on the 4th of July that we were the only ones on it. We didn't see another person until our way down, which um, is pretty amazing. Uh, it's not, it's not the, like I said, not, not the most visually stimulating hike until you get to the end. And it's actually, you know, kind of challenging, especially for uh, someone like me who, uh, doesn't like the elevation very much and you know a little bit heavier of a hiker um, I think Alex was doing pretty good but uh, I was struggling at the beginning but once you got past that that first service road it made for a nice hike through a bunch of streams and things like that uh, streams and things like that and then moved on to um, that view of that bowl at the end which was just absolutely stunning one of my favorite uh, views I've seen in Colorado so far so that's our hike of the week. Um, again, most of these hikes are going to be Colorado based. I'll touch on some Utah and some Wyoming and, and things like that as well. Uh, but I live out here, so that's that's where the hikes are going to be. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, and this is something that that has really helped me on my journey. I know a lot of you kind of listen in to to see the journey, and especially on the website at Fat Man Little Trail uh, on the website. A lot of people check me out because of, of the journey of going from somebody who basically went from his couch to the trail. Uh, and the organization I want to talk about is the 52 Hike Challenge. Um, last year, I did the 52 Hike Challenge, and, and I did their basic challenge, their starter challenge, which is just hike 52 times. Try to hike once a week, 52 times. The only rules are you can't hike more than once in a day. You have to hike. Um, the hike has to be one mile. But if you can only get out to the neighborhood park or you can only, you know, go down the road a few blocks or something like that and, and get outdoors. But it's to, designed to try to motivate you and help keep you motivated to get outside and feel, um, you know, just feel outdoors and, 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 and get off the couch and out there and get started. What they do is when you sign up for the for the. Um, challenge and I have links on the website if you guys want to check that out but when you sign up for the challenge they send you um, some some information some guidebooks some uh, or the guidebooks are online but they have some online resources some some coupon codes and things like that and then they send you a package that has stickers in it and then they have an envelope in there and the uh, it's a little manila envelope and it says do not open until your 50 second height well when you when you order it, you know that there's a metal involved. So you know that inside of that envelope is this metal. Um, and it's actually, you can actually kind of see it right back there. It's hanging in that shadow box. And it's oddly motivating to all those days that I'm like, I mean, I just, I just can't today. I just don't want to get out on the trail. I just, I just want to sit on the couch and eat bonbons again. Um, do they even still make bonbons? I have no idea. I, that's just kind of an old reference from married with children days. Um, but just to see that little envelope and be like, man, I've got to get to this 52. I want to open this thing up. I want to get this medal. So last year I finished it. 
sometime around uh, September, I think it was, was when I got my 52nd hike in. Um, living in Colorado, we have so many trails. I was able to do a different hike for each each trail pretty much. I think I, I repeated a couple um, that time. So I finished the basic one last year. So this year, to help me stay motivated, what I did is I joined the 52 Hike Challenge with their Adventure Series. And the Adventure Series is a little bit different. And what they do is they kind of, it's, it's like a scavenger hunt for hiking. So they have goals like do a couple of waterfall hikes, do a hike in a national park, do a hike in a national forest, um, do a hike, a journal about your hikes, which, you know, I write about every single hike that I do. So so that was an easy part for me. Um, but it, it, it makes you kind of go outside of your comfort zone and visit a national park or visit a national forest or do a different kind of hike. And if you're used to hiking in city parks or, you know, in the neighborhood park or something like that well now it's taking you out into the woods now it's taking you out to find a waterfall I, the waterfalls i did were actually frozen because uh it was we had a cold spring so everything was still frozen and my waterfall hikes were frozen so i got to the point where i am going to finish my 50 second hike for the adventure series on saturday so i'm really excited about that um on the 52nd hike, the goal is to bring uh, some people with you that have helped you along the journey. And I've got a couple of people that are that are coming with me that, that I'm really excited about. And there's supposed to be some rain, so we're hoping that, that we get the hike in and uh, am able to finally open that manila envelope again. Um, but if you're looking for something to just kind of help you get motivated and help you stay motivated, this has been really beneficial for me. It's just something that... I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do the, the hiking, but I didn't have that structure and, and it just gave you kind of that light at the end of, or gave me that light at the end of the tunnel, which I really appreciated because I, you know, everybody needs a little push every once in a while and getting from the couch, which I spent a lot of time on the couch, uh, you know, I spent years and years and years sitting on my couch and watching TV and I could tell you everything about Netflix, um, you know, from 2014 to 2019. But in 2020, I got out and I started to move. And, um, you know, it, it, it makes me feel so much better. And just from the mental and physical uh, standpoint of being outside, being on trails, pushing yourself physically, and then just kind of the, the relaxing power of nature and, the, and clearing your mind out there. So I, I wanted to do it, but I didn't have that structure of, okay, I've got to get to 52 hikes. And then with the adventure series, they step it up even more with you have to do 52 hikes, but you also have to do waterfalls, forests, nature, things like that. So all of that information is on their website. I have links to the website on fatmanlittletrail.com. Um, and you can find them at 52 challenge, uh, or 52 hike challenge.com as well. So if you're looking to get started, I know it's late in the year right now, so it might be hard to get the 52 hikes in. Um, but it, it's just something that can help you get motivated and help you stay motivated, uh, on your journey. If you're going for the, uh, the fat to fit journey, like I was trying to do, or just get outside, um, and try to make yourself, you know, a little bit better uh, from that mental and physical health standpoint. Uh, it's a good way to keep yourself motivated. So check them out. Um, I really enjoy it, and it's it's a really good organization. Every time you do a hike, you post it on on Instagram or on Twitter uh, or Facebook, uh, and and you hashtag it. You know, hike number one, hike number two, so other people can follow your journey as well. And I've met a couple of, of friends who I've never actually physically met, but we've just communicated uh, over the internet based on. Um, you know, doing these journeys together, even though, you know, they're in the Midwest or they're in the, the Arizona or they're all over the country. And we've just kind of formed a little bond in, a, in an online, um, you know, relationship where we help motivate each other. And it's become a really good thing and, and a really important thing uh, in my life, which I, which I, um, you know, I'm happy for it. So anyways, that's the other thing that I wanted to talk to. That was segment two here uh, on the podcast. Um, like I said, we're rebooting it and we're, we're going to try to figure out uh, the best way to do it. Uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to talk about another website um, that for since I'm based in Colorado and most of my stuff is out west, if you are looking for some good hiking advice and you live on the East Coast, uh, one of my friends from Colorado, or friend, Fat Man Friends, we'll call it, uh, is a website called Rush to the Outdoors. Um, it's R-U-S-C-H uh, to the outdoors. And it's a mother-daughter team that goes around hiking around the East Coast. Um, I've seen posts that they've done 
I feel like from Maine all the way down to Georgia. Um, and so if you're looking to get out there and, you know, to try to do things and, but you live on the East coast and not on the, on the, you know, Rocky mountains or on the West coast around where I talk about, and you're just looking for a little bit of help getting started, um, check out rush to the outdoors.com out on, uh, for the, for those East coasters out there. So, uh, I think that's going to do it for the podcast. Like I said, we're rebooting and we're really happy that you guys are listening again. Um, and I will try to be more consistent on, on posting them. Um, and doing a little bit more with the production and with the with the uh, values of it uh, to try to make it a little bit better. If you have anything that you want me to talk about, uh, feel free to shoot me an email at fatmanlittletrails at gmail.com. Uh, you can also follow me on all the social medias. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube if you just want to, and TikTok. Oh, TikTok. But if you just want to hit me up on there, it's Fat Man Little Trail on, on most of those. And you can search for me and find me there and shoot me a note. And, and if there's anything that you want me to talk about and or if you had any questions, I'd be willing to uh, answer those as well. Um, until then, I think I'm going to sign off. And I do hope to see you guys out on the trail soon. And until then, happy hiking. <laughs>